either. Spazzy Rooney coming at you. There's a little pre-talk thingy before the video. Oh, so exciting. First of all, if you're going to DreamHack, I'll be there on Thursday and Friday. Make sure you follow me on Facebook and Twitter. If you don't, you will not get the updates of where I am and what we're going to do and all that types of good stuff. Synchronized Dudes is going to be on Friday. I hope you can join for that at least and I'll do some other weird stuff. So follow me there and that'll be great. Second of all, I do apologize about the weird colors in this video. I recorded it with XSplit. The coda is very weird, but I decided to keep it anyway because there's a lot of cool information in the video. So I hope you guys are going to enjoy it anyway. Uh, plenty. Oh, just get, can we just roll? Can you just roll the video? Good. Wait, I, actually, I should take one. Spazzy and Planty. Hello, YouTube. Spazzy coming right at you, and Planty's right there in the background. It's time to do a video about what I use to record locally to my drive, um, to edit footage to YouTube, to stream on XSplit in 60 frames per second, 720p, everything you need to know, basically. A couple of things that we have to go through before we start this video is one, Links to everything will be down below in the description. So you'll see my specs there, you'll see all the programs there and everything. So go there before you ask any questions about that. Number two, when it comes to all this streaming, recording and everything, uh, when it comes to sending video back and forth in your computer or out on the interwebs and stuff like that, you'll find that it's quite fiddly. And the best thing to do will always be trial and error. If you find a setting in a program, you read up on the internet what it does, and then you try it. Do not take what it says on the internet for granted before you've tried it. And for that matter, do not take what I say as a fact until you've actually tried it. For instance, if you have a bitrate setting that you want to upper because Spazzy said that this is the right number for him, that doesn't mean it's the right number for you. Sometimes there are facts behind that, sometimes there's not. It all has to do with what kind of like hardware and softwares you've got and everything. So trial and error, my friends, it's the way to go. Let's start off with what I use to record locally through my drive. As for now, I use DxTory to uh, record everything I need. I'm gonna show you the window right here. There you go. Oh, you can't see my stupid face, but you don't care because you wanna see this. Starting off on the top, you have profiles. Do not fill around with that. It will automatically create profiles when you need it. So just ignore that. First of all, you want to go into this tab and set up a folder. You want to add a folder. As for me, I have a, um, a separate hard drive in my computer that I record to. And then you want to test it. Test the writing speed by benchmarking it. Press run and, blah, 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 and it'll give you the recommended speed for that drive. Now generally you want a separate hard drive on your computer for recording footage. This is because you don't want to bunk down the system in any way and it's generally just the best way to go. Hotkeys, you can set hotkeys to whatever you want. Movie, this is where it gets interesting. So frame rate should always be 30 FPS or lower. You might want to lower it if you don't have a fast enough PC. However, YouTube videos are always max 30 FPS. So there's no reason for you to record in like 120. And if you upload a video with 60 FPS, you'll notice that YouTube will bung it down to 30 automatically. Output, now this is what determines what you're gonna do with a program. If you choose file output, you will record locally to your drive. If you use direct show output, you'll send it as a signal internally on your computer. This means that you can send a signal to XSplit. However, I never got this to work the way I wanted it. It was fine, but I still got FPS drop. We're looking at recording locally to your computer and streaming at 60 FPS at the same time. So I just have it on file output, which means I'll record locally. Now, AVI is what you want to go for. Uh, if you cannot handle AVI, if you get FPS drops, you can switch to raw cap. Raw cap is like a, I think it means that you don't compress the video, which means that you're left with sort of a raw file that no editor softwares can handle. And then you can later on go into the converter, which I think is uh, this one. And it'll bring up a little window where you can then convert the files and can choose which ones you recorded that you want to convert into an AVI file that you can then use to edit. So check this if you're having trouble with recording to AVI. You want to include the mouse cursor if you like so. Do not synchronize the video FPS with what you do. That means that you will be playing at 30 FPS and that is kind of low depending on what system you're on. Uh, size, you can go by percentage size or a specific size. I go by uh, 1280 times 720 because this is the HD format that I use to upload to YouTube. Now, you want to go ahead and download the Lagerith lossless codec. Why? Because it is what most people recommend doing for DxTory. Uh, the DxTory video coder is okay, but most people find this one to be more efficient. And you want to go into this and use multi-threading if you have a CPU that can handle that. In terms of the color modes here, I've just gone with this because I, it give me some better performance. You'll notice that going into the higher depth colors or whatever they're called, like for instance, if you go to the DxTory video codec, um, Going like to true quality, giggity giggity, is generally not worth it. Seeing as you will be uploading them to YouTube, you'll not get that awesome color thingies anyway. And to be quite frank with you, when I used the Lagerith Loftus codec with uh, the YV12 
thingy, I find it to be just as crisp and clear as anything else. So, all right, so we're done with the video settings. My God, my voice is uh, already starting to act up. This is where DX Story shines uh, in the audio settings tab. So here you can see that you can easily add a lot of audio channels. Why is this good? Well, it means that it'll give you more editing possibilities when you bring it into the Sony Vegas, which we are going to look into later. What I can do is I can add an audio stream. I can then set this to any device that's on my computer and it'll appear in a separate uh, audio track when I drop, drag it into Vegas later, which is amazing because that means I can uh, fiddle with the levels and make sure that you hear my voice over the in-game sound and stuff like that. And I do not have to worry, for instance, with Fraps, you just get an audio track that you can't do much with. Moving on, screenshot, we don't bother about that. We move into the advanced settings. Here I have nothing to give you, I'm afraid. I use two uh, threads. Uh, processing threads here. Uh, default is one. Uh, I've tried fiddling back and forth between all of these, but I seldom notice any difference. I have it on two there. I'm not sure if that does the trick. Try and read up on what these does. You can Google that thing, you know? All right, now we're gonna move into... I'm back, hello. You missed me, didn't you? So we're gonna look through the uh, XSplit settings here. What I need to do in order to do that is switch to this window. Look at this. Holy mooperoonie. Okay, so XSplit is very nice because you can set up scenes down here. And that means that you can switch between like, this is what it looks like when I'm out of game. This is what it looks like when I'm in game. But you know, there'll be a game window behind that. This is my webcam and all that types of good stuff. This is just a black screen. And uh, this is a nice artwork I got from, oh, this is so nice. Look at it. I always end my stream looking at this one because it's so nice. So what you can do with XSplit is very nice. You can add stuff. <laughs> it's awesome. All right, so you can, for instance, add your camera. You can do what I do when I stream. You can add media files and you can put out a little bit of a, I'm gonna remove this XSplit window so you can see. You can put up some graphics and stuff and just enhance it like this. Channel settings from top to bottom. Starting off there, we have spazzy. Password is slurp and merp and derp and spurp. X, Y, seven. Location, pick and choose the closest one to you. That's generally where you get the best ping. Preset, I have my to default very fast. You can go slower depending on your CPU, but I find myself not needing to do so quality-wise, so I just left that. Again, trial and error, my friends. Even though I've read up that I could go lower with my i7, I don't do it because I don't see the difference in the quality, all right? Quality is set to 10, and again there, I didn't notice much different when I went lower, but that didn't uh, impose my frame rate, so I just uh, left it there. Max bit rate and the VBV buffer is something you're gonna have to read up on. It has to do with how much your upload speed can handle. I'm gonna link a video in the description which leads to a tutorial on how to figure out your bitrate and uh, buffer. Resolution is default stage resolution and the audio is gonna be uh, 44116 mono. The reason I have mono there, mono no 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 no, is because I have a microphone with an XLR connection which, which requires an external sound card that projects the signal, the audio signal, as a mono in stereo, which means that if I don't set this to mono, you guys will only hear my voice in one of your earphones. Bit rate, 160,000, you don't really need to go higher. I don't feel that the difference is worth the stress it might put on CPU and internet connection, all right? And in the view tab, you set your resolution to 1280 times 720 and frame rate to 60 FPS if you have the exact same setup as me. If you don't, you're gonna have to try out and see what you can handle. Generally, you wanna go with like, I say like lower end systems go with like 25 FPS and uh, yeah, 720. But like I said, try it out, see what you can handle. Moving on. All right, so now to a crucial point of streaming in 60 FPS. I use a capture card for that. A capture card is something you install internally on your PC and it does all the video encoding for you uh, instead of your processor having to use all these use on that. So I use something called the uh, Aver Media Live Gamer HD. And the Live Gamer HD is able to uh, stream or record 1080p at 30 FPS or 720p at 60 FPS. So, so far, I've, I've got to say, this card is is doing wonders to my streaming setup. I'm getting 200 FPS in League of Legends when I record locally to a hard drive and stream at 60 FPS. It's amazing. I'm super happy about the card in general. What you do in XSplit, though, when you've installed your capture card, is you go to add, you go to camera. This is at least how it is with Aver Media. It's very smooth and simple. Just click it right there and voila! There is my desktop. Now, obviously this will be a game window and you will have HUDs and stuff. So basically this is how it looks. Let me switch to the right scene. In game, that's how it will look when we're in game. Hello. <laughs> and now with that said, we are gonna go into Sony Vegas, which is what I use for editing. 
So I cannot give you really a, like a rundown on how I edit in Sony Vegas because it takes a lot of time. I've practiced and practiced and I've learned a couple of tricks and all of them are available on YouTube. Like if you have something you want to do in Sony Vegas, just YouTube that thing and you'll find a tutorial on it. That, it's just like the information is out there, guys. That is how I got it. It's not like I'm born with what I do. It's You, you got to search for it, man. You got to search for it. All right. But what I am going to show you is how the um, file looks when it's imported from DX Story with the logarith uh, lossless codec. So I'm going to import a uh, file, just a random file from last night's streaming session. There we go. We're going to drag it into the timeline. And booyah! You'll notice that I actually have two separate audio tracks down here. One is the in-game sound and the uh, sound from my voice communication. Look, it's under 999 now. Mm -hmm. But what I have here on the bottom is me. At uh, least is here. We might uh, bump into him. Ah, yeah. uh, stepped on a trap. This seems bottom. This seems bottom. Oh, really? This gives you a massive little perky roo. I can solo uh, here, these might, uh, tracks listen, and yeah. I can like oh, listen to them track. alone. I can it's listen bottom. to this one. And what I can do is like, all right, I want to hear uh, this here, we might, uh, uh, louder than anything track. else in the video. I'll go around, separate those two tracks, split it up like this, and I can then go into normalize and bring it back up so you can really uh, hear what's going here, on. We might, uh, bump and yeah. likewise, uh, I can go in. Oh, let's see this one. I want this one to be separated as well. I want to split it up and I want to bring that one up to a higher level as we well. Might, uh, I'll do in. that. Yeah. Oh, I stepped on a trap. This seems bottom. As you can see, guys, this is super useful because you don't want a video where you cannot hear the commentator and you don't want a video where you cannot hear the in-game sound. You know, you, you got to balance it and this is a nice tool for it. I don't have to use any other separated uh, softwares for recording the my voice or anything like that. I just use this. For instance, I want to bring this one up to speed. Let's bring this one I think I'm going back there. Missing Nidalee. That was probably annoying. Now I do also use Photoshop for creating my like, uh, you know, hulls and stuff in game and all the la layouts and overlays. All this is created by me actually in Photoshop and, you know, the same thing goes there as in Sony Vegas. I've basically just fiddled around with it. I have no freaking experience with it whatsoever. I've, um, you know, I've practiced. And the way to practice is just like, alright, this is what I want to do roughly. For instance, I want to create transparency in Photoshop. How do I do that? Go to YouTube, search bar, transparency in Photoshop. And there you go. You know, there's tons of guys out there helping you out in these kind of ways, so I'm not gonna. But anyways, I hope I answered a lot of your questions uh, with how I use um, software to my advantage in terms of streaming and recording and everything like that. Specs, links, everything down below in the description. Make sure you hit the like and the like button if you did enjoy this video, guys. It helps me out a lot. You can add it to your favorites, you can share it on Facebook and Twitter. That's it. This has been Spazzy and Planty. And we're both out. Dudes!